Hey, what's going on Rapid Nation? In today's video, I'm going to touch base on the US economy, hyperinflation, what the Fed is gonna do about all of this, the supply shortages, and gold and silver. Let's get rapid. If you haven't subscribed to Rapid Updates, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click that bell so you get notified when I publish videos. Also, feel free to join the Telegram group. The link is down below. This gentleman named John Tamney comes out and says, hey, there's no supply chain shortage or inflation there's just central planning and he makes a great point in this article he describes by saying please keep in mind as you read media coverages and so-called supply chain disruptions resulting in shortages that are said to be causing inflation if you want a bigger laugh read about what President Biden wants to do in order to get supplies back on the market with an eye on replenishing US retail shelves what President Biden has done he's went out and said hey Hey, keep these U.S. ports open 24 hours and get them operating. And thanks to the 46th president, we now know what held the Soviets back and ultimately destroying the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union closed down their ports and opened up for a short period of time, which caused the Soviet Union to have food shortages, the result to their demise. In other words, because the politicians panicked during 2020 pandemic, they ended up closing jobs down, closing the ports down, trucking, all of that was closed down, not really thinking Thinking ahead from poor planning what the repercussions were going to be and in the result we see inflation turn into hyperinflation food shortages people not going back to work people deciding that the job that they were doing whether it was trucking or wherever they were working this may not really be for me and what we are seeing the web has been destroyed based on the decisions that politicians made during the pandemic I love what he says here, in which case, please not insult reason by talking about shortages or inflation now. Let's instead be realistic and talk about central planning. We know from the 20th century that when politicians, authoritarians, or both substitute their intensely narrow knowledge for that of the marketplace, that immense want for very little and lousy supply is the logical result. Yes, it is. When we're not economically free, bare shelves are an inevitable result. How many of you have a Twitter account? If you do and you want to follow me on Twitter, that link is also down below. But Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey came out a few days ago and said, you have the right to be scared about hyperinflation. Brian Sozi says he doesn't really care for Jack Dorsey, but he says this man is right to come out and tell his 5.8 million loyal subjects late on Friday. Brian says, I think Dorsey is on the mark right here though it's partly self-serving as any outbreak of hyperinflation would meaningfully erode the value of the u.s dollar and probably be bullish for crypto which mr dorsey is heavily involved in the journalist writes for instance we are one bad storm away from oil prices going north of 100 dollars a barrel and natural gas prices going even further through the roof hyperinflation is going to change everything it's happening so you're damn right that the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell should be warning about in increased inflationary pressures as he did on Friday, which spooked the market. Powell lulled everyone into thinking inflation was transitory. He was seriously misguided and now investors could be left holding the bag. You cannot rely on the government. You need to get one foot out of the system to protect you and your family. I say to everyone who follows this channel, don't be scared, be prepared. Prepare for the environment ahead. And back on October 24th, Yellen says U.S. is not losing control of inflation. Are they going to tell you any different? Here you had Janet Yellen saying on Sunday that the United States was not losing control of inflation and that she expected inflation levels to return to normal by the second half of next year let's see what next year brings are we going to be any better or any worse so what kind of tools do the fed have right now time for the fed to taper bond purchases but not to raise rates federal reserve chair powell on friday the u.s bank should start the process of reducing its support of the economy by cutting back on asset purchases but should not yet touch the interest rate dial let's talk about something nice and shiny and nice to own and have gold and silver are rising on fears that the central banks are failing to keep pace with inflation gold and silver have been steadily finding buyers since late september pushing back from multi
multi-month lows. At the same time, long-term interest rates continue to move upwards. Previously, rising bond yields acted as a factor for selling precious metals, paying no dividends or coupons. So under these conditions that we're seeing, we're seeing inflation as less transitory than ever before. We have supply chain problems, high energy prices, accelerating wage growth, amplifying pro-inflationary factors. So under these conditions, hedges against long-term inflation, you have cryptocurrencies and precious metals are regaining their shine. So Bitcoin rallied over 60% from the bottom in late September, taking the price of an all-time high of 67000 on Wednesday. Shares of the biggest gold miners are up around 10 to 15%. Silver jumped 125 during the same time, three times as much as gold with its 3.6%. Gold and silver are great indicators, and there's a possibility that we're seeing a rebound developing in a new cycle of rising gold prices gold is up at 1807.65 and silver is trending up 24.58 per ounce so i'll leave you with the brent oil chart we're at 86.134 closing in on 90 dollars per barrel stay connected with rapid updates and by all means stay rapid